Greetings, fellow mortals. Communicating is a strong word. It seems to me that people haven't been able to communicate very well. This is especially true on the internet. Many aspects of communication are lost when all you see are words on a screen. Body language, tone, expressions, volume, and even eye direction affect what you're trying to say. And I know that I'm saying this as a person that doesn't show his face on YouTube. The irony isn't lost on me. But I do show my dog though. That has to count for something. But the point is, I feel like people in life are losing their connections, their ability to communicate, and their tendency to assume the best out of the people around them. That's originally what drew my attention to Comey Can't Communicate. That last word caught my attention the moment that I saw it. How you word things is extremely important. Even using synonyms for what you mean can change everything about a sentence. Communicating can get even more difficult when it comes to internal definitions, which I define as a personal way that a person defines a word that can be a bit different compared to the dictionary definition. The biggest example that I can think of is my wife and I's different definition of the word contrived. When my wife uses the word contrived, she's often thinking of interesting things that are complicated. When I use the word contrived, it's an insult to something that's overly complicated and is trying to hide the fact that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Many times, the two of us confuse each other by using that word. It doesn't matter that we explained it to each other. That internal definition is stuck in our heads. I'm sure that many people run into such issues like that every day. People have their own thoughts and feelings behind certain words after all. Because communicating isn't always easy, especially when you're talking about art. That's where I smoothly transition into talking about Comey Can't Communicate. Now, the title of this video is true. My wife and I did argue over the show, but our definition of a fight, it's different than others. Our fights tend to go like this. Oh, I didn't like this thing. Oh, she's gonna hate the voice that I gave her. <clears throat> well, I do like this thing. Well, here's why I don't like this thing. Here's why I like it. Let's agree to disagree because we won't change each other's minds on this topic. The end. I know, it's a terrible fight. Now, why doesn't my wife like Comey Can't Communicate? She explains to me that she hates the timid ideal girl trope in anime. My wife is rather outspoken as a person. She doesn't like female characters that are docile. I, however, don't care much as long as the story is done well. In addition, she's not a fan of most slice of life anime, except for Spy Family. She loves Spy Family. Her biggest criticism of that show is that there's not more of it available right now, but her criticism of other slice of life stories comes from the snail crawl level or borderline non-existent level of character development. As for me, I like a slice of life story every now and then. This problem between our tastes popped up with the disastrous life of Psyche K as well. I was super amused by Psyche K, but she was really bored. Finally, she finds the sexualization of teenagers to be really weird. I can't argue with that last point. It's not my favorite part of anime, but I'm numb to it for the most part as long as it's not too bad. Fortunately, the girl that wants to be Komi's dog isn't in the show a lot, and I do find the yandere trope hilarious in this anime. I just can't help it. Yandere Simulator made it such a meme in my head that I always find amusement in the trope. Because of our disagreement about Comey Can't Communicate, I had to watch the show by myself a lot. That was fine with me. My wife generally goes to sleep before I do, so I watch an episode before bed to help my brain turn off. It's nice and relaxing. If you don't know, Comey Can't Communicate is about an average teenager named Tadano helping Komi get over her social anxiety in order to make 100 friends. Komi is borderline incapable of talking to people in any way. Fortunately, Tadano quickly grows to understand her and helps her befriend the various weirdos that attend their school. That's right, school. If that's not a trope done to death in anime, I don't know what is.
it doesn't really bother me, but I do like when romance stories come out in different forms. Like, it's hard to date an otaku. That's a good example of something different that I like. But it's another aspect of Komi Can't Communicate that my wife just doesn't like. It's not her thing. She doesn't like many mundane stories about everyday life. That's why she can't handle one of my favorite shows, Hoyoko. Oh well, I'm just happy to be with someone that likes any sort of anime at all. To me, Komi Can't Communicate is a perfect little show where I can watch humorous scenarios between wacky characters and see some heartwarming moments. Nothing about the show is revolutionary. I wouldn't call it genre-defining either. It's good, and it tackles interesting topics that I think a lot of people around the world are struggling with. Also, I like seeing someone afraid of social situations grow and befriend people. I like to think that it might be helping. As an introvert, I can relate, slightly. I can't say that being out with friends for extended periods of time make me feel anxious. More like it tires me out, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to have those connections with people. Comey Can't Communicate makes that message clear all the time, like literally every episode. It's a nitpick I have where I jump between liking it and disliking it and finding it to be cute and finding it to be annoying. Maybe the creators can take that part out after a while, I don't know. If I'm watching this show on Netflix, I'm probably already invested in the show. Just saying. Now, I wouldn't say that this show is for everyone. I wouldn't call it an introductory anime or anything. But I would say that it's cute enough for an anime fan to like. I chuckle at least once per episode. And it gets plenty of smiles out of me too. Most of it involves Najimi. They crack me up most of the time. <laughs> Plus, I never come out of an episode feeling like I wasted my time. It leaves me in a good mood right before I lie down at night. There are things to criticize though. While my wife hates the timid girl that everyone loves trope, I hate the average protagonist trope. I realize that the creators are trying to market to the most common denominator, but I always prefer for my main characters to have something special about them. It could be anything. Tadano is so average that it's painful. I guess you could say that he's a good listener and notices things that others don't, but I don't know if that's enough for me to be invested in him. So I suppose how much you like the show depends on if you can get invested in the characters or not, which makes sense for a slice of life show. Perhaps that's why I had such a fondness for Psyche K. That's one of my favorite slice of life anime that are out there. Komi Can't Communicate is good too though, and I would be open to more suggestions for shows if you leave them down in the comments below. I say to give the show a shot. It's not like it's a hard time sink or anything. You'll know in the first few episodes if you like the show or not. Just try not to argue too much about it with other people. If there's one thing that the show got me thinking about is that we should all try to communicate better. That includes me. I can definitely get better at expressing how I'm feeling, and perhaps we can try to give each other the benefit of the doubt a bit more. I don't think that people are actively trying to be terrible communicators. Except trolls. But trolls are gonna troll. I found them easy enough to ignore, or to block, or to mute. We are on the internet after all. But in real life, I try to ask people to explain what they mean when they say something that sounds bad. Sometimes people just word their statements badly, and that's okay. I know that I don't talk perfectly all the time. Trust me, you won't believe how many takes I need to do for each section of my videos. I truly suck at talking sometimes. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like my takes on storytelling, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It would really help me out. Also remember that I will be self-publishing my novel, Dance of Frozen Death, at the start of 2023. I hope that you will check it out. I appreciate you. Do not despair.